Hello, I hope you're all well. This video is going to be five beauty tips for gingers. Firstly, you do not have to be ginger to watch this video. You do not have to be ginger to pick up on these tips. But I know that when I started watching YouTube, I pretty much knew nothing about beauty. Like I was very much coming to it from a clean slate. All I knew was to like put foundation on and bronzer on and mascara on. Like I didn't know there were different formulas. I didn't know basically anything about beauty. And I really struggled finding information for redheads or gingers. So part of the reason that I set up my blog was because, and my YouTube channel, was because I wanted to get more information out there and kind of share tips and tricks and things that work for my colour hair and my colour skin. So if you're pale, a lot of these tri tricks will apply to you as well. Um, also if you have fair hair, like if you're blonde, some of these tricks will also apply to you because my skin and my hair colour is fair. I've been watching YouTube videos for about three years, so these are tips that I have accumulated over that three year period. And, but yeah, I'm aware that not everyone is that interested in makeup and they just wanna know how to look good quickly and fail safe ways to get the look they desire every time. So this is hopefully going to help you on that path. The other thing I wanted to say is that yes, this is my completely natural hair colour. I have never ever ever dyed my hair. I am very self-conscious about a lot of things about my body, about how I look, but my hair honestly has never been one of those things. That may sound like I'm bragging, it's not supposed to at all, it's just that I've always liked my hair colour. I feel like if I was to dye my hair, it would look strange. So yes, I this is my natural hair colour. I am completely 100% ginge and proud to be. So the first thing that I want to talk about is eyebrows. Eyebrows for gingers is, oh my god, the hardest thing ever. Um, like I did not do anything to my eyebrows for the longest time. I didn't even pluck them. Um, because, well honestly because my mum was always like, don't pluck your eyebrows, you'll regret it. So I didn't, I listened to her. Um, but I really should have just like cleaned them up a little bit. And look at them now because they really need doing. But yeah, now I get them threaded and I'm very pleased with that. So I'm very lucky in that even though I am fair and I am ginge, I do still have quite bushy eyebrows. <laughs> what am I saying? I never filled them in until about two years ago, maybe a year and a half. And honestly, the reason that I didn't fill them in for so long was because I was scared of the shades. Like, I'm not gonna look good with a brunette eye pencil. I'm not gonna look good with an orange eye pencil. I'm not look, gonna look good with a blonde, like a really fair eye pencil because my eyebrows are ginger. So if you are a redhead, my tip for you for eyebrows is do not buy one with orange or red in the shade. I know that seems kind of counterintuitive because we have orange hair. So you would think, yeah, just go for the natural colour of my roots? No, don't do that. <laughs> I would recommend going for a blonde shade, kind of like a dark blonde shade. The, the, the eyebrow product I use, and I have used exclusively since I started doing my eyebrows, is the Soap and Glory Eyebrow Pencil. It's like a dupe for the eye, for the brow whiz from Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's in the shade Blonde Shell, I believe, but it's got a really, really fine nib and then it's got a little kind of spoolie brush on the other end. The reason that I 
got the blonde shade was because they do two shades and one is brown and one is blonde and I was like I'm definitely not going to be the brown one so I went for the blonde one in the hope that it was right and it matches perfectly it doesn't it just adds a little shade like it's really hard to describe but it doesn't like add color it just adds it just makes your eyebrows stand out. If you want a better colour range, I would recommend looking at like Maybelline brow products or L'Oreal brow product products because they have like dark blonde and light brown and things like that, which because obviously I'm a certain shade of ginge, which um, works for this particular product, but there are different shades if you're like a really deep chestnutty ginger colour you're going to want more something a bit more brown and if you're like super light fair almost blonde ginge you're going to want something maybe even lighter than this. There are different types of product that you can get as well there's like gels and obviously pencils like this but in general I would definitely steer clear from anything with red in the colour or orange in the colour. It's the surest way for your eyebrows to look unnatural, completely drawn on and like it's obvious that they're not your real eyebrows. Do you know what I mean? I would recommend going for a blonde or a light brown shade maybe but generally in the blonde category I would recommend as our hair it's probably going to be quite fair, um, it's not going to be super dark if it's ginger. My other thing is comb them out, brush them out, once you put the product on brush them out because it's going to make your brow just come together so much better. So those are my two top tips for brow products specifically, we'll just do one top tip um, like in general because I only have five. Pick a shade that doesn't have orange or red in it and also comb them out, brush them out after you've put the product in. The other tips are going to be quite centralised around finding the colours that work for you. Camera stop recording! My skin colour is obviously very pale. It's not really dark ginger, it's not really light ginger, it's kind of very sort of middle of the road ginge and I have light eyes. My brother has exactly the same hair colour as me but he has dark brown eyes, like really dark. So it can vary a lot and your colouring is going to affect what colours suit you the best. So for me personally, warm colours and I think that for most gingers, warm colours are going to suit them more because of the tones in your hair colour. I stay away from bright pinks, bright orange, bright yellow, those kinds of colours because they clash with my hair. I don't wear pink clothes, I just don't do it because it just doesn't suit me. Very warm colours do suit me but like orange and pinks don't and reds are hard to pull off. It depends on the red. If it's an orangey red, nope. If it's a blue toned red, much easier. You really need to kind of find your comfort zone in your colours and work out what looks best for you. For me personally, always warm toned eyeshadows have been my comfort zone. Um, these are all Makeup Geek shadows and I've obviously like picked, like hand picked these myself because I know that I will get a lot of wear out of all these shades. So they're all kind of rusty, warm browns, nude colours because that is just what suits me. I can wear purples but they have to be like warm toned purples again. So this is Makeup Geek Bitten, uh, which is like a really nice kind of ready purple colour, quite a deep colour. Um, that suits me very well. However, by Terry Ombre Black, ombre black star in misty rock doesn't suit me at all it's a very cool toned purple and it looks awful on me i keep trying to wear it because i'm like gotta get my money's worth but it looks rubbish on me two eyeshadow palettes i recommend if you suit warm 
warm colours are the Stila Eyes Are The Window palette in the shade Spirit. They do a few different shades of this. Um, this has some nice like warm tone purpley colours um, and then it does have a couple of cool tones. I mean this is as cool as I would go and I would only really use this right in the crease like very minimal or um, as an eyeliner. So I wouldn't really use the cool tones in this palette, but I think it's really good value for a palette. It has a lot of warm toned colours and a lot of kind of colours which are really easy to just wash over the lid and not put anything else on, which is the easiest eyeshadow look to do. It's not super expensive. I think it's around £30, which for the number of eyeshadows you get, one, two, three, twelve 12 eyeshadows, um, it's kind of standard for a high-end eyeshadow palette. So yeah, it's not too expensive and it has a really good sized mirror in it. I love the size of the mirror. I use this mirror even when I'm not using the eyeshadows. The kind of starter warm toned palette that I would recommend if you're just starting off creating eyeshadow looks is the Naked One palette. This was my first eyeshadow palette and for warm tones you really can't get any better than this. It doesn't have very many mattes in it, um, but for like starting off your eyeshadow game, <laughs> this is a great palette. It does have some kind of pinky colours here, but again, they're quite warm apart from this one, but this is just really for use as a highlight. Um, so yeah, the rest of them run pretty warm apart from this one here, and obviously the black one, but black you're only going to want to use in a very minimal way really anyway again I think it's around 30 pounds and you get one two three twelve eyeshadows in it as well the consistency is really buttery really creamy I mean with all these eyeshadows that I'm talking about they're really buttery and really creamy and really easy to blend but I would say that this is kind of the best to start off with because it has the least amount of scary, adventurous shades in it. So like I say, play around with what looks good on you. If you suit cool tones, but you're still a ginge, great, rock them, go for it, you know, just play around with what works for your skin tone and your coloring. That goes as well for blush tones and bronzer tones. Bronzer especially, be careful. Um, it can get really orange really quick. And as I say, I stay away from orange colors because it will clash with my hair. So two bronzer recommendations I have are the Soap and Glory Solar Powder. This is a great wintertime bronzer for me. It I also use it to contour with, I contoured today and then I bronze up my cheeks as well with it and all over the face with it. So it's kind of like quite a cool toned bronze colour. It's not too orange, it's not super pigmented, which is good for a bronzer because you don't want it to be like an orange cheek, you know? This I really like. The other one I enjoy using in the summertime, which is slightly more orange, but still not really orange at all. It's Nars Laguna, I only have it in this palette. Um, but yeah, Nars Laguna is also a really good bronzer shade for fair toned people and ginger people. In terms of blush, again, find what colour works for you. For my colouring, peachy pinky blushes look the best. I don't go for very bright blushes because it can make me look very kind of clown-like I guess. I really like this L'Oreal blush. It's sorry it's come out the packaging but I just kind of popped it out and put it in a Z palette. Z palette however you say it. This is L'Oreal blush in Rosewood. It's really nice. It's very pigmented though and it's quite this is about as deep as I would go in a blush. My fail safe everyday shade is quite expensive. It's a high-end product. Um, it's Hourglass Dim Infusion. This is just the perfect peachy pink colour. This has actually lasted me two years and I ha it doesn't even look like I've made a dent in it. So it is good value for money in that sense. But I would recommend checking out the Max Factor blushes which look very similar to this. They're baked as well and so I'm sure you could find a shade that will suit you in by Max Factor. 
for the longest time I never used blush and I find that when I do use blush it just makes me look so much more healthy. I only used to use bronzer because I thought kind of warm tones suited me better and kind of pinky colours didn't look good on me because again it clashed with my hair but I do find that mimicking your natural look so naturally if your cheeks go pink when you get hot or cold you know like if you're really cold and your cheeks go pink mimicking that look with makeup is going to give you the most natural look if I just wear bronzer I look very gaunt and I look very washed out so that would be my tip, um, find out what colour suits you for blusher and bronzer, but use both, you know, if both suit you, use both. My next tip would be foundation colour, make sure, like I always just go for the lightest shade because I know that is going to match me the best, a lot of times even that will be too orange or too dark or will oxidise on me. Oxidising means that once you've applied your foundation, it kind of changes colour throughout the day and goes orange when it's mixed with the oxygen in the air. That happens for a lot with me. You can see my neck is very white and very pale. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this foundation colour does oxidise on me slightly. So it's just, it is what it is. I like the foundation enough that I still use it. I don't think it's super noticeable. Always, always test out a foundation in the store on your neck to see if it matches like right here on your jawline. Test that out because if you test it there, then you're going to see that it matches your neck. If you test it like here or like on your face, you're not gonna be able to tell as well. Also, when I'm shopping, I find the lighting can be very like bright and very different to how the foundation looks in regular lighting so be aware of that as well go outside and look at how the foundation looks in the natural lighting as well as the shop lights so my last tip is probably one of the most useful tips that I could give myself it is to use a brown eyeliner rather than a black eyeliner when I use a black eyeliner because my eyes are so fair my eyelashes are completely ginger blonde whatever you want to say when I don't have mascara on so I think that when I'm not wearing mascara I look kind of sick <laughs> like ill because they are so fair, it just makes me look really washed out. So, because they are so fair, if I use a black eyeliner, it can make my eyes look very stark and just not pretty. Pale and then just black, you know? So I don't use a black eyeliner pretty much ever. I always use this Ardency In eyeliner supercharged mod eyeliner whatever it's called smooth right because it's really creamy it's in the shade coffee it works really well it's a little bit dark sometimes even this shade even though it's brown can be a little bit dark but once I blend it out it's usually fine you can't get this in the UK so for UK viewers um the Rimmel London exaggerate waterproof eye definer is a great option um these eyeliners are both very creamy and they don't drag. Uh, I find the problem with eyeliners is often that they will drag on my skin and really hurt when I'm applying them, but these both don't do that. I tight line with a brown eyeliner every single day I do my makeup. I find that tight lining is the one thing that makes a huge difference. And obviously wearing mascara, I always wear black mascara, I don't wear brown mascara. So if you don't know what tight lining means, it basically means pushing the eyeliner, applying it on your waterline, on the top line, on the top lid. I would take it and I would go right in there and just kind of run it. Often I'll just kind of dot it because it's kind of uncomfortable to do. But yeah, so I would go right into 
almost on the eye, you know? So doing that I find makes an absolutely huge different in difference in making my eyes look more defined and making the transition between my eyelid and my black mascara eyelashes seamless. Often, I don't know if you get this problem too if you're a ginge, what will happen is I'll have like a white or like a fair band at the roots of my eyelashes and then the rest of my eyelashes will be black with mascara but it doesn't look good because you can kind of see the natural colour of your eyelashes at the very root of the hair, if that makes sense. The only way I can solve it is by tight lining every single damn day of my life, so that's what I do. The other option is to actually get your eyelashes tinted. I do do that sometimes, particularly if I'm going away to a sunny place and I don't want to wear mascara and I want to go in the pool and, you know, do all that good stuff. I will get my eyelashes tinted so it basically looks like I'm wearing mascara 24-7. Um, you can get your eyelashes tinted various different degrees, but I always go for the blue-black shade because that just looks the most mascara-like. And it lasts like four to six weeks, so it's not permanent or anything. But yeah, so that is my tip for using eyeliner if you're a ginger. Go for a brown shade, go for a creamy shade that isn't going to drag and tight line. So those are my five beauty tips for gingers. I hope that it has been helpful. I know it was kind of probably quite long in the end, but I hope that it helped you if you're not really that into beauty, but you want to know what shades will look good on you or what kind of colouring to go for. I hope that it helped. I'm always looking to find the next best thing so leave me a comment down below if you have any product tips for gingers because it can be a little tricky to work with this colour sometimes as I'm sure you guys all know. So yes if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to see my other videos and keep updated when I upload a new one and give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.